Look at Ephesians 4. Oh, we're in Ephesians 4. I never got out of it. Uh, verse 9, it says, uh, no, that's not what I want. I already read, for the perfecting of the saints, for the working of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Everything in us is for everybody else. Uh, Romans 12, 4 through 9, the message version says, uh, it says, be good friends who love deeply, practice plain, uh, uh, practice plain second fennel, and honor preferring one another. So putting ourselves in a position where we're esteeming others better than ourselves, we're looking out for others, we're helping somebody else not to fall, we're encouraging one another, not always looking for what's wrong in other people to validate our insecurities. Because you know that's what, that's, that's what you do. Like, that, that's why you watch somebody else fall, because you're falling. Or you're, you feel that you're failing, so you figure, well, I can justify my falling and failing by pointing out what's wrong with them, as opposed to looking for a way to assist them in being the best that they could be. Helping somebody else achieve their dreams. Never watching another man fall. Never. Always looking to, what could I do to help? What could I do to help? Even if they look like they're going to shine past you. I have a friend that's a, uh, well, he was a basketball coach, a head basketball coach. He got the job when he was 29. So he called me up. I said, well, you know you're going to be responsible for other people's dreams, don't you? He said, huh? I said, yeah, you know you're going to be responsible. I said, there's somebody that's going to come through your school that's going to achieve a level of basketball you've never achieved in your life. That's where you're going to be tested because you're going to have to be able to push them to a level that you never achieved as opposed to you're going to be tempted to choke and to hold them at the level that, that you've accomplished because of your own insecurity. But can you watch that person shine way beyond you, the place you've ever been? And then you have some people they deal with, they're insecure about something, it's something they don't like about themselves. So what they do is they go around and look for what's wrong with other people. They spend their whole day criticizing what's wrong with, yeah, uh, yeah, they can sing, but, yeah, they're a good speaker, but, because of their own insecurity. No, you're supposed to be an edifying folk. And you want them to elevate, to challenge you to move beyond your insecurities, right? See, that's what happened when, uh, when, when it's a parable where they called, in, uh, they called in a collection of people. They needed them to work. They said, okay, here, tell you what, this is what we'll pay you. Twelve hours work. So some other guys came later, and they said, okay, this is what we'll pay. No, no, no. He called them in for a collection of work and says, well, I'm going to pay you what you deserve. Called in the other guys, so I'm going to pay you what you deserve. When it was time to get paid, everybody got paid the same thing. So, so... One guy's like, hold on a second, like, we work like 12 hours. They work an hour. Uh, explain to me how they get what we get. He says, did you get cheated? Did I give you what you deserved? Why are you upset? I'll tell you why they're upset. Comparison. If they didn't spend all their time worrying about what was going on with the other people, they would have been happy that they got what they deserved. It's like, man, that dude did me right. He said he's going to give me that. He gave it to me. As a, but as soon as they saw other people getting what they got, oh, 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 hold on, I deserve more. You didn't ask for more. I gave you what you asked for. See, 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 can't, it, we got to get past a lot of this stuff so we can actually become together um, as one. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 14 through 27. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase some of this in the message. It says, you are the Christ's body. That's who you are. You never forget this. Only as you accept your part of that body does your part mean anything. You're familiar with some of the parts that God has formed in his church, which is his body. Uh, Galatians 11 says, um, Galatians 11, 6, Genesis 11, 6, I'm sorry. It says, look, he said, the people are united. They all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Because they're all on the same chord. They're all on the same page. They're in agreement. They can't be stopped in agreement. You know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to play on teams and win championships. And uh, I, I know... Uh, in Ohio, we played in a few of the Pro-Am championships, and by the time the season ended, it was only five of us. Um, I think one year, the, the tallest person was 6'4". 
But we won because we was in agreement. So we couldn't be stopped. You know, that's usually the scripture I use when I do, uh, when I did chapel for different uh, sports teams. I would use that because I was like, if y'all in agreement, you can't be stopped. That's the difference between uh, Chicago just beat Brooklyn. The difference was a team playing a bunch of individuals. Agreement. So we can win in life if we're a team. Like you can look right now, everybody has a job or everybody has a place that they spend time in. And a lot of times there's pressure to live the life of a Christian in the, amongst those crowds. So sometimes, sometimes people will get frustrated. But actually you have a team of people that's living the same way you are. So you should be encouraged. I've actually, I've actually did Bible studies for football teams and guys was like, man, you know, it's hard living this life. I said, look around the room. There's another 50 people living a life. If y'all just came together, y'all the peer pressure. That's the hardest thing for people to do, come together to be in agreement. The hardest, very difficult thing, I, I think I gave you the testimony when I worked in corrections, and I told the guys, you know, they was tripping one day. I said, you know what? Y'all pretty much can take over this place. It's 60 of y'all and it's one of me this particular day. I said, if y'all got together and y'all got an agreement, I said, y'all can just run me out of this place. Y'all can take over this whole, make me do what, what y'all want me to do. I said, but you know what? I'm not worried about it. It's not going to happen because y'all don't know how to get an agreement. Now do what I just told y'all to do. You go clean over here. You go do this. And they did everything I told them to do. 60 of them. I was confident they was going to do that. I was going to tell them to do Know why? Because I knew they couldn't get an agreement. The devil sometimes is confident that we're not going to advance to fulfill God's purpose because he says, yeah, they don't, they don't want to be in agreement. They don't want to be a part of the team. Because once they become part of the team, some of their flaws may be exposed. They may have to be, have humility. They may have to be transparent and vulnerable. That's why sometimes he's not worried about your marriage. He's not worried about your marriage because he's like, they're not going to get together. Agreement, please. Pride going to flare up. You ain't telling me what to do. You ain't my daddy. You ain't my mama. He, so the, the, the adversary be walking around like, I, I told you. See, if we can just embrace God's plan, God's humili humility, we can experience God's harmony and, and experience God's fulfillment. Because we're faithful in another man's and God will give, our, give us our own. You ain't skipping step A to get to step B. Your own. Because that's how you wake up. Where's my own? I want my own. Where's my own? Can I have my own? And so God's like, oh, cool. No problem. Um, can I have your faithful in another man's ticket? Uh, faithful another man's ticket? I, I don't have a faithful another man's ticket. Oh, so you haven't been faithful in another man's? Well, I can't validate you getting young. So come back when you get that ticket. Nice talking to you. Then you come back, some years go by because you feel that you're ready. And you show up, you're like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, it was tough out there, tough out there. So I just came to get my own. Oh, so you got your ticket now. Well, I figured time has gone by. And by now, just because of proximity, then I would get my own, right? I mean, t all this time I've been around, where am I? Oh, I just need your, your ticket. Yeah, but you know, I mean, come on. Can you just grandfather me in? No. And so I'm telling you that. The scripture says that. Luke 10, Luke 16, 10 to 12. And you know what? Some people walk right out here and go into isolation again. And it's okay. You can do that. But just don't expect to get your own. Don't be mad. Don't be frustrated. Just realize. It's because it's not rocket science. That's why the devil, the devil don't even take you serious. That's why he'll put on a cigarette pack. Hey, you smoke this, it'll kill you. Because he's like, <laughs> I'm just being real with you. He's like, this fool going to smoke it anyway. Like, the devil don't care if you come to church. Long as you don't live out that word. He, you could be quoting all types of scriptures. You'd be like, man, that dude knows some scriptures. <laughs> long as he don't start living them, I'm good. <laughs> now, I tell you, man, that's, hey, that's a pretty powerful word. He'd be sitting next to you. Be like, man, now that's a revelation right there, bro. You probably really going to blow up one day. Long as you don't start living it. You know more than them. Because you went through New Testament, Old Testament class, he Hebrew and Greek. Long as you don't live it. I know some, I know some some 
Psalmists, singers, dancers, ministers, deacons that's been exposed to a tremendous amount of work. And haven't used faith probably more than twice in their entire life. But they're talking a good game, though. Situations come up, so can say they go right to hustle. They go right to fear. Scripture says, fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. They ain't never seen the salvation of the Lord because the first thing they do is fear. They don't even get to stand still. It says, fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. God's deliverance, God's help, God's manifestation. They don't get to stand still because they go right to fear. The scripture said, fear not. Be careful, be worried for nothing. Oh, that's just scripture. <laughs> that's just the Bible. Okay. See what happens. We have to return to believing and trusting. If not man, then at least trust God. So we have to return to believing and trusting. The scripture says, uh, James chapter 3, uh, 14 through 17, it says, your bitterness, envy, and self-seeking in your heart has kind of separated you from the things of God. So you have to stop holding everyone hostage to your past pain. That's, you know, that's what's kind of messing you up. So you don't trust, trust nobody because you've been through pain. So you're holding everybody hostage to your past pain. You don't know what I've been through. Key word, been through. Scripture says, forget everything that's behind you, press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Put that stuff behind you. You can't ride, you can't drive a car looking through the rearview mirror. Right? It's, uh, so it's something called, uh, I, was, I was watching something else and they, and, and they were talking about slider, Sluter syndrome. And it's a chronic disease. It causes us a lot of pain. But they said what happens is when the people are healed from the disease, they miss the pain. They don't know how to live without it. So they've been in pain so long. That's what chronic is. I know that, right? <laughs> All right. So they've been in pain for so long. Even when the pain is, 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 is relieved, they're looking for it. I know. I had pain here yesterday. Where is it? You don't like the pain. You talk about the pain. You complain about the pain. Can't stand the pain. You're healed of the pain and go looking for it. Because you don't know how to live without it. You miss the pain. You miss the abuse. You miss people treating you wrong. What, what, what's going on? You got you to gotta let that go. We got to move beyond that. Right? Oh, this is good. We got to, the scripture tells us in Colossians, it says, it says lie not to one another. another. Lie, L-I-E. Um, so don't present a false self to one another. Because that's a lie, right? Truth is the real you. It says, it says so, so you got to be you. See, sometimes we say, I'm not lying because I didn't tell nobody a lie. But if you're representing a lie, it's not a lie. So if you're being anything less than you are. So when you sit around a person, you go, that's nice. But on the inside, you're going, oh, my God, why'd you even put that on? <laughs> wouldn't, I, wouldn't I be lying? You're my closest friend. But really, you're like, I can't stand you. Never could stand you. I don't even know why I hang out with you. Wouldn't that be a lie? I'm uncomfortable every time I'm around this person, but you never tell them. But you're always around them. Wouldn't that be a lie? You would be better not say nothing, right? Than to just be lying, right? It says lie not to one another. That's what the scripture says in Colossians 3, 6 through 9. Read it for yourself. All right? Um, okay. Maybe I should do this next week. Yeah, I have to do this next week. This might be deep. Because I talked to you about we have to get past the uh, private, uh, we have that private victory to have public uh, triumph. So we have to do that next week because that might be a little deep. See, we stand on our feet. That's enough. <laughs>